Greetings and welcome. My name's Mike Puskas from The Seven Cents. I am a 56 year old truth seeker, an alchemist, and a believer that we have the ability to change our stars. And that many of us right now have that capacity to reach up and touch the stars. This is a new definition of universal truth. This is understanding the inherent capacity that we have to emanate and radiate compassionate strength at the highest octave of self-expression in the external by drawing from our true internal liberated self and our deeper and closer connection to God or what people like to refer to as the divine. Working in the frequency of music as a language of connectivity to the higher divine realms allows us to see beyond the veil of emotional distortion. When we get forced, pushed into a corner, we immediately feel drawn to experiencing great waves, emotional waves of guilt and shame, which triggers fight and flight and sees us become incredibly reactionary at a point where we make no sense in spiritual terms because we are ultimately pushing our survival mechanism, trying to reinforce our safety and security and completely overlooking the fact that we are just one fractal within a more fragmented aspect of universal truth in the cosmology. 2020 has been a year of revelatory energy. It has allowed us to exercise a very reinforced capacity of temperance. We've been temperate and looked at everything on face value, not what it is, not what it could be, but what it actually is in any given moment. We cannot afford any longer to allow ourselves to become beholden to existing or playing the game of life out in a lower vibration. And the greatest prayer that I offer to the collective and all those people around the world that have tuned in to the seventh sense over the course of the last year, we're coming up to our, our first year of operation. And I'm truly humble and grateful for every one of you and all the beautiful bliss and joy that you brought into my life and those practitioners that are very much a part of the larger and bigger picture of this expression. But the prayer that I offer to all is to no longer be beholden to the behavioral patterns of your past and to no longer view your cycle of existence through a distorted filter and to no longer operate in the student modality of the recycle program, but to consciously transcend into the parental perspective where you draw and I draw pleasurable experiences and consciously guide event streams into the now. And when we do that, we no longer embody this vehicle with three sturdy wheels of connection of higher awareness of more sensitive alignment, but have this one badly aligned wheel, shaky wheel, if you like, on our cart as we career down the mountain that is life. Because we become mindful of the fact that something isn't completely tuned in to a more 
balanced and or zero point of energy. 2020 has been a year of absolute discerned and liberated opportunity. And it's been embodied in all manner of probability and possibility as perfectly emphasized in the quantum field that we influence with every thought that we collapse into every action. And it really is time as we come out of this incredibly extensive period of retrogrades that our planetary logos has been subjecting us to these rather amplified and or intensified energetic expressions and transits to arrive back at a point where we can start to recalibrate, rebalance, reconfigure our energy field. Part and parcel of that is to recognize the intrinsic goodness that exists in all things in existence. I've been using a particular term most of this year that a lot of people have also somewhat picked up on, that is anomalous. When things feel like they're not hitting the mark or they're out of kilter or they're out of balance or they're deceptively presenting themselves in one way when really it's a completely different form of expression. We should be able to put any anomalous behavior and any anomalous deceptive expressions well and truly behind us particularly as we near what is known as the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction. The Saturn-Pluto conjunction has been off the charts as far as going through extended periods of dark nights of the soul. But within the same breath, we recognize the purity and the truth and the core intrinsic goodness in all things as perfectly aligned and represented in the alchemy of grace. The alchemy of grace allows us to strip away what is left over as far as any toxic residue from the dissolving of the third density matrix we become the keepers of the new doorways outside of that mutant matrix paradigm. We allow ourselves to not only acknowledge the higher illuminated solar light codes, but we implement them within our light body. And we allow that to become a form of our true embodiment of expression. It becomes our externalized language. And language and the recalibration of language is the one thing that I've been on about literally all year and probably most of half of at least last year. But that inherent within the current expression of the language that we all share on the planet as a means of communicating openly and sharing the human value that we all have within us has been the same distorted signal and or transmission frequency that's kept us very, very much trapped in a lower vibration. It's not about I, and it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about we, the we are, the be am, 
the us. Together, we have the collective capacity as infinite offspring of the infinite being to change everything that we believe is somewhat solidified as part of a habitual place or a habitual state of being, of expressing ourselves within the human experience. This has also been a year of reintegration, reintegration with our celestial kin. Many of our star seeds have been yearning for an opportunity to say enough already. I've done the work, I've been diligent, I've remained interdependent of reactionary states of behavior and I want to go home. You can go home anytime you like and you'll find that that will become incredibly apparent to you in your dreaming. Most of us are dreaming about leaving the earthly construct that we attach to every morning in rebirth and we travel outside of the limited capacity of the auric field into the wider expanse of spirit and what spirit brings and affords. Because we have that right. We have that ability to enjoy the fruits and labors of what we've toiled to create in our lives. There is a lot to be said for trusting in our higher selves and leaving the expression of external forces, including our devotional practices. I was totally, I'm not gonna say besotted, but I will say pretty wrapped up in very diligent devotional practices to certain deities that I believed had their place. Well, they had their place. They did what they needed to do. They energetically informed the synapsis within the human mindset to move beyond our limited level of thinking and transcend those limitations and or boundaries. Do they hold the same weight, the same dedication, if you like, that they may have in different periods and different descending and ascending ages throughout our evolution on planet Earth? Of course they did. How relevant is it to today? Not so much. And just as I stated at the very beginning of 2020, that the human light body is now operating at such a high frequency that it discerns in any given moment whether or not it wants to attach to a given circumstance, a particular banter with another person, to work in a co-creative capacity, or to find itself in some level of deep, deceptive codependence, we're operating at such a high frequency now that we know, we have the knowing within the knowing itself, how to be able to navigate beyond our need to be subservient to our belief structures and to certain archetypes. If we are truly multidimensional, if we are truly sovereign beings, if we are in the accelerated mode of taking our power back, then I'm sorry. That just distorts the signal. The tuning fork of connecting to the higher realms 
of divine connection lies within, not out there. There's no ascension. There's nothing to do with it. The only thing that's taking place is that we are pushing away the conditioning and the way that we've been molded developed shaped into being the expression of a certain expectation and within that expectation lies an agenda and within that agenda lies a forced responsibility I'm sorry no more and many of the star seeds on planet earth are also very much aligned to that idea that no more, I don't need to do that. I am my sovereign being, I am multidimensional, I can travel outside of the time-bound reality using the telepathic capacity of connecting through the universal hive mind to understand exactly what, it, what I need to be doing in any given moment. Have we, those that have been blessed with the gifts of second sight, the bliss and the gift of a more blissful bubble of joy and an outlook thereof, those that have been blessed with the gift of music and language, those that have been blessed with the gift of deeper empathy, Yes, I do believe that. I do believe that some of us have been given a leg up because we're supposed to take on the role of leadership. We're supposed to set a benchmark, if you like, of expressing behaviours in a way that are both nourishing and nurturing and are designed to work in a more collective capacity for the greater good. I said to someone recently that as musicians, understanding higher vibration, understanding the embodiment of light and sound gives us that leg up in being able to ascertain when dealing with people, whether it's personal or whether it's business or part of the larger transpersonal journey, whether or not we're on the same page. This for me has been a year of finding a lot of people not on the same page. And that's okay, because part and parcel of understanding the logos of the planets and their transits is to know what forgiveness is, is to understand the importance of remaining true and authentic and transparent to who you are and being strong within a compassionate line of strength when presenting your personality's expression in the larger collective of the Gaia classroom. The other thing I want to talk about for a moment is humanity's lack of connection to nature. What really triggers me is to know that while COVID-19 was seen by the, the bulk of the population on the planet as this freedom robbing anomaly embodied in the form of a bioengineered virus and couldn't see beyond the fact that by bringing you into a more ins insular space it allowed you to go within and experience what it's like to deal with your own shadow self. Part and, part and parcel of dealing with your own shadow self is dealing with mental imbalance. 
the lack of physical exercise, the lack of going to some form of uh, routine robs one of their identity. And when your identity is pretty much out the window, you don't feel as if you're worthy. There's no worthiness there. So there's no value in expressing valor in trying to move your ship forward. But what it also tried to do is said to you that when you got stuck and you had to find ways and means to be able to become more expansive in an internal space, when you got outside, when you were allowed to express yourself um, and do that connection outside, it was a time to get in touch with nature, to ground your bare feet into Gaia's beauty and bounty, but not many people really saw that. And so this particular year, many people have lost their connection with nature. Nature is the ultimate teacher because it knows, it understands selection, it understands survival of the fittest, it understands that everything is part of a rather larger cyclical earthly experience. I made a special effort to connect with nature wherever I possibly could. And it's really held me in much better stead than most because there is a beautiful, powerful, connective energy, a charged, electrically charged fusion of energy that exists between the natural world and the so-called assimilation that we embody and exist in the hologram. I've also seen science become rather overzealous, trying to find ways and means of being able to accelerate beyond what our capacity to be able to absorb and deal with and adapt to. And so a lot of it has really kind of fallen into a not so sentient agenda. I talked a lot about this in the whole kind of, you know, the attention aggregation that all of the corporate world has been working tirelessly around the clock to implement in our lives. The more they lock us into the screen and have us scrolling through algorithms that have been specifically built keep us locked into this very subservient, almost slave-like capacity, the more the control agenda becomes part of the norm. And that's why I do have to conclude in saying that while 2020 has been incredibly revelatory, incredibly awe-inspiring in so many ways, I know I've written some of the best music I've ever written in my 36 plus years on the planet um, in the business. It's also been a very, very obvious backpedal. We had the ability to reverse engineer all of these difficult and turbulent and codependent and emotionally driven processes and we chose not to. Why? Because there's safety and security in sticking to the plan. Let's not shake things up because the more we shake things up, the more we force people 
to work against the grain of who they are, the more dissension, the more instability, the more imbalance we create. We can emanate and radiate pure compassion and strength in every thought that we collapse into form. But I do want to speak more about the fact that we've had this ongoing opportunity to really recognize that if we continue to self-perpetuate our own delusions, which further inflame the deception that we amply draw around us every day, and we seem to be good with it, the more separation we create. And yet I know in my heart that separation is illusory, otherwise we wouldn't have a sovereign integral we wouldn't be able to embody the six heart virtues and emanate that compassionate strength at the highest octave of everything that we represent to the world. But that takes work, doesn't it? That takes diligence, that takes mindfulness, that takes courage. Where's the courage? I've been looking for the courage in people, in my human family, all year. I really have. And I've seen fragments. There are a number of individuals that don't need to be named because they know who they are, who are the absolute embodiment of courage. And then there are those who I believe have it within them to allow their worthiness to rise to the surface of their human expression and demonstrate that courage but feel as if they're overstepping the boundary that's the language again isn't it the boundary the limitations these words these phrases these expressions shouldn't exist there are no boundaries there's no limitations. There is only the defined moment. I tap my heart and I state, I'm sorry, forgive me, I love you and thank you. I'm sorry, forgive me, I love you, I thank you. But I also understand the importance of self-love. I've always been of the mindset, and I'm going to state it clearly yet again for the record, and it's me. This is my truth being expressed to all of you do with it whatever you choose to do. If you can love yourself, you can even use that distorted phraseology of unconditionality. I don't believe that you know, I'm in the human incarnation on this planet in, at this particular timeline within this framework of the cosmology there is anything that even remotely resembles unconditionality. That is just a complete delusion. Having said that, if you can love yourself unconditionally, meaning, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna fall from grace. I'm gonna lose sight of my mission in life. I'm gonna meet people that are gonna take me off my path. I'm going to allow external influences to guide me into territory, uncharted waters that will test me. And 
will be further echoed by the energetic expression of the planets themselves. But over and above all of that, I put my hand on my heart. Sorry, forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I can love me. And I truly believe with every pore and every cell of my purified body, spacesuit, flesh vehicle, container, that there is the ability to externalize the internal. And by recognizing the love you have for yourself gives you the sovereign power, the capacity, the ability, the power to love another. To really love another. Now, there's been some absolutely incredibly beautiful examples of the love thy neighbor, the good Samaritan, the selfless intention of others, but it's been incredibly limited. It's like I've been saying in the Seven Sense live stream, everything is fragmented. There are all these fragmented groups out there. And they all follow their own little piece of process. There's nothing wrong with that. No one's judging that. But it needs to become part of a much larger collective expression. And spirituality, in my book, needs to be recalibrated, reinterpreted. What actually is spirituality in the year 2020? How many people equate spirituality with beingness, with oneness? Because isn't that what spirit is all about? Recognizing the intrinsic goodness in all things in existence. Understanding our capacity and capability as the offspring of the creator, to be the creator. To mirror our expression to every single man, woman, child and soul on the planet. Doesn't that embody oneness? Doesn't that embody beingness? Isn't that the BM? And isn't that the true reflection of the we are? I certainly believe so. I've really enjoyed presenting this transmission to everyone today. I've really allowed the channeling of true authenticity the very core essence of who I am to be presented with great love in my heart for all. You're so beautiful. You have so much to offer the world. You have this incredible intrinsic ability to cross every bridge, jump every hurdle, and hold the 13 rays of the rainbow. Which brings you the bliss and the joy because gratitude is the only emotion that remains perfectly aligned regardless of who's expressing it. Be grateful. Wake with gratitude in your heart. And understand that all that other stuff 
all that external influences. Yep, it's part and parcel of your self-authorization journey on planet Earth, but it's not the be all of the end all. Use the time in a manner that nurtures and nourishes your soul journey and keep your heart open and available to whatever shows up. Good, bad or indifferent, it's all medicine. Everything is medicine is one of the major expressions of the alchemy of grace. See it for what it is and not what you want it to be. Ask the universe for what you need and not what you want. And do your best to not attach agendas and forced responsibilities when playing your role in any given moment. And just allow that oneness to well up underneath your cork and move you seamlessly and lovingly across the expanse of this beautiful universe, multiverse, cosmological expression. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing your heart with me. Thank you for becoming available to the new illuminating you. Your light body is so bright and intense right now. Let it shine. Let it be all it can be. Much love to all. Namaste.